Gold continues to maintain its status as a highly sought-after metal in today's industry, generating a substantial annual revenue of nearly 200 billion US dollars. The initial step in the gold mining process involves the identification of potential areas that may contain gold deposits. Geologists and mining companies conduct extensive surveys, prospecting, and geological studies to pinpoint these promising locations. This meticulous process may entail analyzing geological maps, conducting soil sampling, and utilizing advanced techniques such as remote sensing or geophysical surveys. Once a potential gold deposit is identified, the site undergoes preparation for mining operations. This encompasses clearing vegetation, constructing access roads, and establishing necessary infrastructure like camps and facilities. With the site adequately prepared, the extraction of gold commences. Most gold is obtained from load deposits, commonly referred to as vein deposits, which are concentrations of gold and other metals within the cracks of rocks. Extracting gold from these deposits necessitates hard rock mining, whereby gold-bearing rock is removed through drilling and blasting. Miners venture deep underground, descending over half a kilometer, equipped with specialized machinery tailored specifically for the drilling process. This drilling equipment comprises a long-hole drill rig, which typically includes a drill steel, a long hollow tub, a drilling machine, and a source of compressed air. Positioned in the desired location underground, the long-hole drill rig inserts the drill steel into the rock face, initiating the rotation of the drilling machine while simultaneously feeding the drill steel into the rock. Compressed air is forced through the center of the drill steel to aid in removing drill cuttings from the hole. The arrangement and layout of drill holes are meticulously planned by mining experts and geologists employed by the mining company. These plans take into account factors such as hole size, spacing, and angles to optimize fragmentation and ensure the safety and efficiency of the blasting process. Once drilling is complete, the holes are meticulously prepared for the explosive charges. This involves cleaning the holes of any debris and installing various components like stemming material, detonators, and initiators. Following these preparations, the explosives are carefully placed into the drilled holes and the blast is initiated from a secure location. The resulting explosion breaks the rock ore or into fragments that can be easily handled, transported, and further processed. After blasting, miners utilize a mucking machine to transfer the ore to cars, which are then transported to the main shaft and brought above ground to the mill. The introduction of mucking machines streamlines mining operations by automating the process of removing loose material that would otherwise require manual labor or the use of additional equipment like loaders or trucks. Subsequently, the gold-containing material, whether it be or or scrap, is prepared for further processing by being crushed and ground into smaller particles resembling gravel in size. The material is then pulverized in a mill until it reaches the texture of beach sand. This step is crucial in increasing the surface area for subsequent chemical reactions. A water and cyanide solution is added to the pulverized or in another mill, further grinding it into a mud-like pump. This pulp flows into large settling tanks where the heavier wet solids sink to the bottom while the water at the top drains to a separate area. Workers transfer the wet solids into an agitation tank and introduce air, a process known as aeration or air agitation. The purpose of aeration is to infuse oxygen into the slurry, thus initiating a chemical reaction between the cyanide and the gold trapped within the ore. This reaction leads to the dissolution of gold, allowing it to leach into the surrounding water. Once the gold cyanide complex is formed and the aeration process is complete, the slurry is sent to drum filters for filtration. Drum filters are large rotating filters with a porous surface that permits liquids to pass through while retaining solids. Consequently, the water containing the gold is separated from the solid impurities. To recover the solid gold from the loaded solution, a chemical process known as precipitation is employed. This process enables the gold to be extracted from the solution, ultimately yielding the desired solid gold. Precipitation agents that are commonly employed in the extraction of gold include zinc carbon or aluminium. These agents react with gold ions in the solution, resulting in the formation of solid gold particles. However, these solid particles often carry significant impurities and need further purification. To achieve a higher level of purity, the gold concentrate obtained from filtration undergoes a process known as smelting. During smelting, the filtered material, also referred to as gold concentrate, is blended with flux materials. This mixture comprises a combination of chemicals such as manganese dioxide, fluoride, silica flour, borax, and sodium nitrate. The function of flux is to facilitate the smelting process by reducing the melting point of impurities, thereby enabling the separation of gold from other elements. The gold concentrate and flux mixture are introduced into a specialized high-temperature chamber called a furnace. 
Inside the furnace, the mixture is exposed to extreme temperatures reaching around 1,600 degrees Celsius. This intense heat causes the materials to melt. The furnace is carefully rotated to ensure uniform heating throughout. Under these extreme temperatures, the gold separates from other elements present in the concentrate, including base materials and impurities. The molten material segregates into distinct layers based on their densities, with the gold sinking to the bottom due to its higher density. On the other hand, the impurities referred to as slag rise to the surface. Workers collect the slag and a sample is taken to verify its absence of gold. If any gold is detected, the slag is reintroduced into the smelter until it is completely devoid of gold. Once the gold has settled at the bottom of the molten material, it is extracted either by tilting or pouring the molten mixture. Typically, the gold is poured into molds or casts, resulting in the formation of what is known as a dory bar or boolean. It is worth noting that the dory bar or boolean obtained at this stage of the smelting process only possesses a purity of 80%. To meet the international standard of gold purity, which is 99.9%, .9%, the gold must undergo further refinement. Following the refining process, the gold undergoes a series of tests to determine its purity and quality. These tests, known as assays, are usually conducted by specialized laboratories using various analytical methods such as fire assay, atomic absorption spectroscopy, or mass spectroscopy. Once the gold has been refined and its quality assured, it can be further processed into various forms depending on its intended use, including bars, coins, jewelry, or industrial applications. Given the environmental risks associated with cyanidation processes, adherence to strict environmental regulations and guidelines is imperative. Quality control procedures play a vital role in ensuring compliance with these regulations, thereby preventing the release of excessive cyanide or other contaminants into the environment. Effective treatment and waste management processes are also employed to minimize the environmental impact of cyanidation operations.